Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Mission Matters Marketing Podcast, your source for all things marketing. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres. Keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, signings, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, missionmatters.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, so today is a very special Reunion 2020 episode. What is that? That's when I had a guest on in the past, and I liked them so much, I had to invite them right on back. So today's special return guest is Mike Wittenstein, who is founder and managing partner over at StoryMiners. Mike, welcome back to the show. Hey, I'm glad to be back, and it's a lot of fun to be with you, too. Thanks. Oh, man. So I'm excited to get into today's uh, topic. So we're going to talk about Future Story, a new product offered um, by Story Miners. But I don't want to assume that um, that all of our new listeners caught the first episode. So why don't you start off with giving us a little bit more background on Story Miners and, what, and how you're helping your clients? Sure. Well, you know, it's, t- it's tightly tied to the new name of this podcast, Mission Matters. It's- there's no greater truth when you're starting a business or when you're facing a first-of-a-kind challenge after you've been in business for a while. You've got to get the mission straight because everything comes from there. So when we started Story Miners in 2002, and that was after I served as IBM visionary for a while, what we were helping people to do is get really, really clear on where they were heading with their business. But instead of just putting down a few pretty words on paper, we really dig in with our clients and help them understand the value that they were creating and who they were serving and why they deserve to be in business. You know, it's more about creating value for clients than it is about taking profit when you're talking about missions. So that's how we got started. And we've got a twist coming up now. Where do you, before we get into this twist, um, what, what are the right type of clients that you like working with? Because there's a lot of business owners, entrepreneurs, executives listening right now and, you know, different types of agency models. Who's typically the right fit or niche for you? You know, the very best client for us is um, someone on the leadership team. So a C anything O. Um, they've been in business for at least a couple of years. We have done some startups, but folks that have been in business for a while have some very different challenges, and we're pretty good at solving those. I like to work with leaders. Our whole team likes to work with leaders who are have some vision, have some frustrations because they're not getting enough buy-in from their teams, from their boards, from their customers, those types of things, and they've been a little bit scarred. Folks that have been um, that have failed once or twice in their lives tend to be a little bit more humble, and that makes them a little bit more human. And in my opinion, the success that a business can have in public in front of its customers has a lot to do with how human that business can be because at the end of the day, People buy you based on what you can do for them, not what you can do to them. That's awesome. Um, and I think that's a great uh, great transition. Let's get into future stories. So how did this all come about? You know, every th- you know we're, 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 we're brand storytellers. We've been that for almost 20 years now. And I was running into trouble telling our own brand story. It was kind of tough. So after failing a few times, I looked back and I said, all right, and so something's changed. Is it me? Is it clients? Is it the market? Well, it turns out it's everything. As a business owner, you're constantly in a state of evolution. So I recognized what the changes were for me. I wanted some new challenges. I wanted some things to be fresh. In the marketplace, we found that what's changing is people's attention span is shorter and shorter and shorter. And everyone is raising their effort and their volume in an attempt to capture a client's attention. So there's a lot of noise out there. And what we found out was that that wasn't enough to solve the problem. So I started doing some interviews, and this started about 18 months ago, and I did about 100 interviews. Now, some of those were pre-sales calls, some of those were client meetings, some of those were about a book I'm working on, but I really did do over 100 interviews. And what I found out in common in about 80% of those was that leaders are feeling really frustrated that they can't earn followership. They're not getting the buy-in that they need for their ideas to even get up to the starting line. And that was really surprising for me. I dug a little bit deeper, Adam, and I found out that the frontline employees are feeling exactly the same thing. Now, they've got other concerns as well. This isn't a one-trick pony, but they're frustrated that they're not getting buy-in for their ideas because they're right on the front lines. They know what's wrong. They have ideas on what to do, but nobody's ready to listen to them. So this whole notion of everything being 
too crazy and too busy and too loud. And like even when I watch TV, it's like half commercials now. It drives me crazy. So that was the challenge that we had to face. So what do you find, and I know this is going to change, of course, based off of business, based off of um, based off of company, founder, size of company. I mean, all these things are variables. But what did you find were some of the common reasons for these breakdowns in communication? What a, that's a great segue question. So what we learned is that leaders fall into sometimes three traps. The first one is their ideas aren't clear enough. So, you know, being story, you know, brand storytellers, we're very good at sussing out, you know, what's the real nugget of what you're trying to say. The second thing was sometimes these these leaders' ideas were crappy. I don't know if you can say that on a podcast, but the ideas just sucked. And nobody would stand up and tell them, that idea is just not right for this time, this situation, or that market. Mm -hmm. Usually there's a lot of good in a bad idea. You just have to, like, take away the parts that are making it not work for folks. And the third thing was that there wasn't a clear picture for employees who'd been working at the firms or for partners who'd been working with the company to, like, sink their teeth in and say, yeah, I want to change the way I work. I want to put in a little effort. I want to do things differently because I really believe in your vision. It wasn't thought through well enough. So those are the three things that we found. So what we did is we figured out that there was a better way to go about strategy. Now, it's not better for everyone, and I'm not saying this is a panacea or the solution for everyone. But oftentimes, if you will picture what it's like in the future to run your business in the successful way that you think it can be run, and you turn around and you look back at today, and you give people the stepping stones and the building blocks so that it's easy for them to move from where they are to where you want them to be, you have a much easier time doing that. So we call that a future story. And it's a different kind of storytelling device. You know, it's, it's been around forever. It's like a flashback or a flash forward in a movie. But the thing that's really interesting is that we'll work with leaders to help them do the very hard design work of figuring out how everything needs to run. Now, how much detail depends on the size of company and what we're engaged to do. But the magic of the whole thing is that when you can show people the environment they're going to be in, how it's going to feel, how the balance of power is going to change, what tools are they going to be working with, what latitude will they have, what will a day look like for them, all of a sudden it's like trying on a suit that fits you like perfectly, and you're the hero in your own story. So what we coach the executives to do, and we help them write these things and figure out these challenges, is we help them to figure out that they are not the hero. And that's usually the hardest part personally of a relationship with a leader. They are not the center of attention. The people they're trying to influence, their most important audiences, need to be the hero. Then they can be the Luke Skywalker or the Harry Potter and build their own future. That's the way it works. Man, that makes so much sense. And just the, I mean, the ideology behind it is kind of, uh, I guess it's, it's new to some people because they see it because they're typically, you know, in front of the crowd, they're typically the one that uh, the leader's in front of the crowd, the leader's giving the attention, the leader's face is on the flyer or all the other things. But the real thing is can they inspire and get what they can do for their employees and also their clients? So, I, I mean, I yeah. love the thought process, and I love how, you're, how you've wrapped it into the concept of future story um, and, and how that's going to help um, leaders going forward. Man, that, that's exciting, Mike. Cool. Let me tell you when it doesn't work, okay, because a lot of good ideas work, and a lot of times they don't work. So here's where it doesn't work. If you're in a ball-bearing manufacturing plant that works lights out, that's like all robots, and you just want to squeeze 1% more production out of it, don't use it for story. Rely on your engineers, your service techs, and your process to do that. You know, do do all the cool Japanese management techniques that you can. If you're facing a first-of-a-kind challenge, like, oh, my gosh, what do we do with this coronavirus outbreak and our employees might not be able to come to work? Our people can't fly. How are we going to sell? Or if you've got some new opportunity that machine learning brings to the way you're doing your invoicing or the way that you're doing your prospecting, that's a -a first-of-a-kind project. And in my opinion, most of the game-changing opportunities these days are first of a kind. They've never been done before. So hunting after a best practice is a guaranteed way to get in second, third, or last place. So future story is a really cool way to tread some new ground 
and to find a future that's unique and valuable, both for your customers and for yourself. Man, that's awesome, Mike. So if somebody's listening to this and they want more information on Story Miners or on Future Story, um, what's the best way for them to follow up, Mike? Well, just head over to the website, which is in um, a redo right now. So I don't know what you're going to find based on when you hear this. But go to storyminers.com, just like it sounds, S-T-O-R-Y-M-I-N-E-R-S, and you should be able to find Future Story on the very first page. Fantastic. Well, hey, Mike, been awesome having you back on the podcast today um, for this Reunion 2020 episode. Excited to have you back in 2021, see what you're up to then, and uh, and get more info on Story Miners, and what, or excuse me, on Future Story, and what, and what it's been doing for your new clients that, uh, that use it. So thank you for that. And to the audience, as always, thank you for tuning in. I hope you got a lot of value out of this. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast. Uh, if you're watching this on our YouTube channel, Mission Matters Marketing, definitely give us a subscribe there, but also uh, leave us some comments in the video and let us know what you thought. Love to hear what kind of things you're working on, too. And, uh, Mike, thanks again for coming on the show.